Hey guys, today I've got a really cool upgrade that I am very excited for. This is how to update your clutch in a 2015 and prior Yamaha FJR 1300 to the new 2016 design. This is going to do two things. One, it's going to give you the slipper function, which admittedly I don't even care about. More importantly to me too, it's going to give you a lighter clutch pull because the new clutch is engine assisted, meaning you have a much lighter pull on the clutch lever. Do you need it? Absolutely not. There's no problem with the prior generations of clutches, but for those of us that do a lot of stop and go traffic, that can be a godsend. As I ride and review more and more bikes, the more modern designs have lighter pulls. Not just specialty bikes like off-roading or like the Versys or the Super Tenere, but normal street bikes like the new X Diablo. It's just one of those things that once you experience it, it's tough to go back. And I have wanted a lighter clutch pull on this. The first time I went through eight miles of stop and go traffic on the freeway because of a, a merging lane, oh, it just killed me. I had to pull off the side of the road just to rest my clutch hand. So this isn't gonna be something that everybody wants to do or is gonna be worth it to everybody. And I'll tell you up front, the parts cost, depending on where you're getting the stuff shipped to, is right around 300 bucks. The best deal I found was at ProCaliber.com. Of course, you can search around, you might find a better deal, but with shipping, that's the best price I found. Now, I made one small goof when I ordered the parts. I actually overpaid by about 20 bucks. What I did is I printed off the different parts fishes for the 15 and 16 and ordered what was different. But what I didn't notice is that there are three plates that are optional into the new assembly giving you a little bit of tunability. The center one, which is what I'm assuming, because I don't have a service manual for the 16, but I'm assuming the center option is what comes stock, happens to be the same part that's in the previous generation. So I ended up ordering two parts that I'm not gonna use. So I overpaid by about 20 bucks. That's it. I will put up the list of parts, assuming everything goes okay, of course, into the description here so you can order everything that you need if you would like to do this. And it should be fairly simple. Pretty much like doing a normal clutch job, it's just replacing a couple extra parts, including the basket. But it's just turning bolts, replacing a gasket, draining and refilling the oil. So with that said, I've got my big old box of parts, my gasket, I've got all kinds of Yamaha parts here, tons and tons of plates. I am gonna to have to soak the new clutch plates, let that go for a little bit, but just tons and tons and tons of parts. It's a big list, but they go together, go together very easily. And I do have, of course, the service manual because there are a few steps that are very important as far as torque values and order of operations as far as uh, even releasing some of the bolts. So I'm gonna step through everything, show you everything that needs to be done, and hopefully, knock on wood, it's gonna be an awesome upgrade here in probably a couple hours. First step though is to drain the oil out of the bike. I have to check my mileage real quick. If you have fairly fresh oil in there, all you need to do is capture it. We don't need to completely drain the thing so I'm not taking off the filter, but you have to drain the oil out of the case because once you take off this clutch cover here, there's oil inside there and you don't want a bigger mess than you're gonna end up. There's gonna be a little bit coming out, but you don't want the whole thing coming out. So if you have, point is, fairly fresh oil in there, just capture it in a clean oil pan and put it right back in. Of course, if you're near the end, which I don't think I am, but I have to verify, do an oil change at the same time. So that's my first step. First step is to put it up on the center stand. I've got it in neutral right now. I may have to shift it into gear to undo one of the bolts, we'll see. Here I've got a nice clean oil pan. Takes a 17 mil socket. You know all about this from doing oil changes. Just undo your bolt here. And let whatever oil wants to come out, come out. Access to these perimeter bolts on the clutch cover is unobstructed except for this top corner. And all we're gonna do is pull the fairing out a little bit just to get our wrench in there. We don't need to take any panels off. You have to start by taking off this cooling vent. Got a quarter turn quick connect underneath there. If this has never been off, it might be a little snug. You're gonna slide it up that way. Only goes about a quarter inch, might be kind of tough. 
You can kind of push on this if it helps you out. I don't know if I've ever had this side off. And there we go. And then it just pops off gently. And all you're doing is sliding off these notches right here. And now we can take this bolt out here and that'll let us just pull this away to get access. And I should note this is, if you can't tell, a generation three FJR. Generation two will be very similar but a little bit different in how you get access to these bolts here. So this is a four millimeter Allen. And then this, you just pop it. It's just a rubber grommet. And all we're gonna do is hold that out like that while we're taking these bolts in and out. This one here is a little bit of a tight squeeze for my taste. I can't quite get this socket in here. These are five mil bolts and I don't want to use a wrench on it and risk scratching this, so I'm just going to take this panel off here. Just have to pop off the seats. Got a couple quick connect screws and this bolt. We'll get rid of this. Now we have to remove this bolt here. That's the only one out of this area we're going to remove just so we can get this stay out of the way. You could probably bend it, but I'd rather not bend that. It's not in there with a heck of a lot of force anyway. I'm just going to get it out of the way and that'll give us access to the rest of the bolts. Now here's the first important point. I'm going to run this bolt right back in so it doesn't get confused with anything. Set this aside. These clutch cover bolts need to come out very gently in a staggered pattern. The manual says a quarter turn at a time, crisscross until they're all loose. You do not want this to warp. It is a critical engine component. So quarter inch at a time, doesn't matter where you start, quarter turn I should say. And that's really all it takes to loosen these anyway. Quarter turn takes it to pretty much finger tight. So now we can get to these here. Top ones are a little bit tighter in than the bottom ones, but for the most part, this is all you need to do. It's not like a long procedure or anything. One way up here. And these aren't in with a lot of force, as you can see. No big deal. But you just want to do them nice and even. I'm going to zip these out and make myself a little diagram so I can put them all back in the same place just in case they're different lengths. I haven't had them out before, so I'm not sure. Better safe than sorry. Last one here, and it turns out they are all the same, so <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. But just in case, I just put them in order. But you can see, same bolts, no worries there. Now make sure you have a rag handy, which I just did. So we're going to pop this cover off and there's probably going to be a little bit of oil that comes out the bottom. You've got some pry tabs here. It's not going to be on with any kind of force. There's a couple dowel pins. You've got a tab here you can put your finger on and a tab up here. And I'm going to slide this over just to catch anything. And it's going to come out, come out to the back. You've got this hose kind of in the way here, so we're just going to take it off the doll pins and slide it back real quick, and I don't want too much of a mess. There we go. So just a few drops. Everything looks nice and clean. You can see the gasket held on to the cover here, and we are going to replace it. Bada bing, bada boom. And of course, match it up to your new gasket just in case, so you don't go any further. I'm gonna do that right now. And we're good there. I'm just gonna wipe up any residual oil that's just sitting here at the surface. And nothing really poured out, so that's good. Nice and clean. Now we got a big cavity here that goes down into the case. I'm gonna stick a rag, where'd my rag go? Down in there, just in case we drop any kind of bolts and they don't go finding their way down into the crank. <laughs> We're just going to stuff him down in there, out of the way, and that's all we need to do. We can just leave that 
sitting right there. Just safer than sorry. And of course, make sure it's a lint-free rag. Shake it out real good. This one's been used and washed. I don't have to worry about it coming apart. So, on to disassembling the clutch. Now we need to do the clutch spring bolts. And like the cover, you want to do these about a quarter turn at a time until they're loose in a crisscross pattern. And here's the point where I want to put the bike in gear. Now we can just slide out our plate assemblies. I've got a rag setting down here just to put them all on. I decided to go ahead and do an oil change. So I'm not gonna be reusing that. I'm not worried about any dirt or grit getting into it. If you are, of course, protect it. And I'm gonna be careful and put everything back down in the exact placement that it's coming out just in case it has to go back in, but it shouldn't. Just slide everything out one at a time, being careful not to bend anything. I'm not putting any pressure on this, I'm just using it to grab so I can get it to slide out. Man, oh man, eight days later, <laughs> those are a little pain in the butt. Just takes some finagling, nothing hard. All right, now we have a lock tab, a little bent lock tab here and we need to bend that off so we can remove this main nut. Okay, <laughs> I just goofed, I recorded a clip and I didn't hit the dang record button hard enough. I'm getting used to a new camera here, so excuse me, but let me just go through what I just did. This is already loose, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. You have three options, well, that I can think of, for taking this center nut off. Option one is to get the specialty Yamaha tool. It's like a two finger yoke holder and it engages with these splines here and I would assume bolts to the case to keep it steady. Obviously an expensive one-time use tool for most people. Uh, I'm not a fan of that kind of stuff, so I didn't get it. Now obviously I could take this bike over to my buddy's shop, Cody River, that I've been working with and he said, yeah, anytime you want to do a project, come on over, we'll give you a lift, you can use all the tools. I could do that, but you know what? I make my videos for the average Joe in his garage, like me, and I want to show how anybody can do it without any special tools. And of course, do it the right way. So not doing that. The other way that you can do it, it depends on the bike. I've, I've done this and I've seen it done, but I just tried it on here and it didn't work. It's put the bike into top gear, which will put the most resistance against the rear tire, take it off the center stand so it's on the ground, and then try it. It was simply on too tight. It was still spinning the rear tire even after all that, so that didn't work. Warning, if you choose to do this, and you can put somebody on the back or add weight however you like to keep the rear wheel from spinning, note, the bike will want to walk forward. So, if you have it on the side stand, you do risk dropping the bike because it will walk itself forward right off the side stand. Be careful if you choose to do this way. I suggest the tool. When you put it on, the bike will want to walk backwards and that's perfectly safe to sit someone on the back. Third option, I went to AutoZone and they have a free tool rental program. You just pay a little deposit. This was 25 bucks. This is an AC clutch holder tool. All right, not exactly meant for this application. Comes with these little sliding pins. And you adjust it. I put these two all the way out. I would imagine that this is gonna be the same pretty much anywhere you go. I took the, set, the, the bottom one out and I knew it would line up somehow. So what I did is I ran one of these bolts in. I used this one down here. The case is not flush, it's kind of angled out. 
So I didn't want any contact and I needed some space for this handle because it was going to lever against it. So I ran this bolt all the way in, put these to the outside edges, lined it up with whatever splines it lined up with. I put a big double thick towel down here. Okay, so there's no metal to metal contact between this and the case or the bolt. No damage, nice and safe. All right, so that just stays in there. Stay. <laughs> so that stays in there in position. And then what you need is a 30 mil socket for that center nut. Now I got this at Harbor Freight in a set with some other big ones. And these are actually impact drivers. The whole thing was like 20 bucks. It was a really good deal. You'll pay that for one specialty size socket at Sears. So I love that. I use this as a breaker bar. Every time I pull this out, I get people complaining on YouTube. I do not use this, haven't for many, many years, as a torque wrench. This is just used as a breaker bar. All right, my torque wrench is only used as a torque wrench. So you stick this on. And it's under a lot of torque, all right? So you muscle it off, pops loose real quick. No muss, no fuss. It's easier doing this than it is the steering, nut, uh, steering stem nut, if that gives you a clue. And that was really no big deal. So off comes the nut, off comes the retaining washer underneath, and hard part is done, onto the next step. Now we can carefully just slide out the Clutch Boss assembly. Should be plenty of clearance in here. Shouldn't be anything falling off either. And out that comes. Okay guys, I'm right near the end of this process and I had a couple things go wrong. One was an assembly difference and one was a big error and I had a legitimate brown pants moment this morning and was really hoping I didn't cost myself a lot of extra money. First, the assembly tip. Okay, now on the previous generations, at least on my bike, or previous years I should say, only one of these lock tab ears was folded over, which was just fine. The original part has a huge clearance around this inner hub. The new part has a very close tolerance and you must fold both tabs up inside the outer diameter of this part right here. If they are sticking out, the new spring assembly will contact the ear and not fully seat. When you put the new spring assembly on, there should be just a little bit of wiggle room. So you know you're not hitting on the ear. I made that mistake and just had to disassemble everything and figure out what the heck was hitting. That was it. Now the mistake I made this little guy right here, this ball bearing, goes in between the push rod that's inside the engine that comes from the hydraulics on the other side, pushes through, and eventually pushes the very small push rod here that then pushes the spring assembly. In between those two parts is this ball bearing. Okay? So I knew something was wrong when I assembled everything and clutch lever was hard as rock. Right? It wasn't moving. That usually means you have something spaced wrong. And in this case, it was this ball bearing missing. So the push rod was extended and obviously wasn't able to make any contact with anything. Here's the problem. <laughs> I knew this guy was in there. I didn't know it fell out. I still don't know at what point it fell out. I know it didn't stick to this when this came out. I was looking at it, but at some point, it fell out and even though I had rags stuffed in those open holes it was still very possible that it went plunk and just rolled right inside the engine case. If I had tried to start it with this in there there goes your cases, there goes you know, pretty much your engine. You have to rebuild a lot of your engine at that point. Or you can take the entire bike apart, drop the cases and get it out that way before you start it. I searched this garage for a half an hour before I found it. I still don't know how or when it got to where it was, but it was underneath my assembly table in a little pool of oil. So I don't know if it stuck to a rag, if it did fall out and it came off on that rag, or if somehow it stuck to a part as I was taking the clutches, I have no idea. 
but luckily, pure luck, it did not fall into the engine. So here's the big tip. As soon as you pull this guy out, grab yourself a magnet, take that ball bearing out, set it aside. Just before you go to put this guy back in, put your ball bearing back in very carefully. And of course, use rags. I'm gonna stuff rags back in there just before I put this guy in, just in case, all right? So there you go, very important, it sneaks out. Trust me, I have no idea at what point it came out. I didn't see it, I didn't hear it, but it did. Back to the show. Oh, and by the way, I'm very glad that this stuff happens to me, especially on camera, because now I'm running into things that somebody else would have inevitably run into, and I can save you money and time and heartbreak. No joke. Here you can see everything laid out. I've got the new assembly paperwork laid out. You can see it compared to the old. Basically, everything from here forward is new. Totally new parts. So I do need, this is the old clutch boss, I do need to pull this little tiny wire circlip off. And I think there's, should be a couple washers back behind that plate that get reused. Other than that, we're going to build everything up. So I just need to double check and go through all the parts one by one unbag everything but you can see how many you need here's all the new clutch plates i'll soak those in new oil this is the new clutch boss totally different design here's the new end piece and i'm assuming these kind of directed fin things are what kind of helps with the engine assist totally different completely different than the old design three new clutch springs a new bearing new end plate that those springs go against some big circlips. And you can see by the back order here, this happens to be Bike Bandit, but all the part source houses are the same right now, getting them from the same Yamaha warehouse. All the red is back ordered parts. So that's why this took over a month to get in. I started this process as soon as the microfish got updated, just so I could be the first. <laughs> Yay, they finally came in today. So that's why I'm doing them. Anyway, I'm gonna get going here. Got some homework to do and we'll get everything reassembled. So we have to take this little circlip off. It's running in a tiny little groove just in here, just holding this together. And there's one section where it's kind of looped in a little bit. I know it's gonna to be tough to see, but it runs a perimeter and then it just loops in one section. Inside here, hopefully it'll focus. You can see the head of it coming out. So we just need to squeeze that together and push it back through. I'm just gonna grab some needle nose pliers. Okay, got it. Came in from the back side. You can get this little access hole and just use a small pair of needle nose pliers. Basically, you're just, they're like little J hooks. You're just bending them enough to get them poked out. You can see this side here. That's all it is. So don't put too much pressure on it. When you put it back in, you're just gonna spread it a little bit. And obviously the, the tension on that bend will weaken the metal every time you bend it. So that's why they want you to use a fresh one. But I just barely touched it, just enough to get it back through the hole. So you just pop that out all the way around. Be careful and it should be just fine. Now that that's free, we can slide off our old two plates. These are not gonna be reused. So these guys here get discarded. Those were the last originals. Just make sure nothing is sticking to the back here. Next up are these two washers. These do get reused. These are the same. So make sure you put them in the right order. They are two different part numbers. Looking at, uh, this one looks concave a little bit towards the engine. So I'm gonna make sure that stays in the proper orientation and the one just below it. So this guy goes on top of this guy and we'll set him aside. Now this does not get reused. Here's our new one. 
So we're going to start building up. First the washers go back on. Now we need to soak the new clutch plates because we're ready to start stacking. And you have to pay attention to the order. There are two different kinds of plates and they split. First we have this one type here, it's a number five on the call out. Then we have six of the number fours and then two of the number fives. Luckily they're very easy to tell apart and you can see by the thickness of the plate itself. If I put these up against each other there you can see that the number fives are half the thickness here as the number fours. So we don't have to really worry about unboxing these or uh, you know getting them mixed up when we soak them in oil. It's plainly obvious. So it's going to go one of these, all six of those, and then the two remaining of those. Now you can use a little Tupperware. I just make a little bowl out of oil here. I mean out of foil. And I'm going to put all the plates in there, top it off with clean new oil, and just let those soak for a good couple hours. And then we can start assembling. Okay, we are ready to start assembling. I uh, put everything in a bag, just started to leak a little bit out of my foil, but those are good and soaked, ready to go. First thing we're gonna do is build up our new assembly here, and that is going to consist of one of the new thinner friction plates and one of the new clutch plates, and then our retainer ring, and then we're gonna put that back on the bike. Now building the actual clutch stack, it looks complicated, and it actually consists of five different parts, you just have to pay attention to what order they go in. This is just our assembly that we're doing right now. So that's going to be on the bike, that's going to be together. We've got a starting position here of four sets of the new thicker friction plate and new clutch plates. Then we come to this number 17, kind of in the middle. That is actually one of the old clutch plates. This is the part that's tunable, where you have three different possible parts that you can put in there. One slightly thinner than this, one slightly thicker, and I actually have both of them right here. Because like I said, I accidentally ordered everything. <laughs> I, I didn't realize when I ordered that only one of those was needed. So I'm going with the center selection, which again, I'm assuming is what comes stock on the bike. And I'm just going to pick one of my old ones. They're all the same. So that's that. Then finishing up, we have another of the thicker, the last one of the thicker new friction plates, one of the new clutch plates. Then we've got the two thinner friction plates finishing it off. So the thin friction plates are in the start and the end of the stack. First one in the start, two in the end. This number 17 in the middle is one of the old clutch plates. All the other ones are new and they just alternate friction plate or uh, friction plate, clutch plate, back and forth, all the way through. And that's it. And then we're just bolting on this new assembly here. We've got those parts up there. And that is going to replace these here that we took off first. So these aren't going to be used. Then we're going to button everything back up, put the oil in, start it up, and hopefully we have a shifting transmission. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this guy built up. All right, so here's one of the holes. We're gonna place the retaining ring in and then work it around into the finely cut slot right at the bottom and it does snap in. So what I found works is just using a little precision screwdriver. You just align it with the slot, gently push it in. It's kind of a friction fit work your way around 
one at a time, making sure it's going all the way in. Otherwise the length won't match up at the end. And we get down to the hole again. Carefully line that last clip in. And then on the inside, spread these guys apart so they can't slide back through and just give the screwdriver a little twist and they are locked back in place. Okay, so this goes back on the bike. So we're just going to line these into the slots and you may need to turn the inner shaft just a little bit to perfectly align because we're changing parts so these aren't going to exactly line up with the old one. It is a fairly precise fit. First, align your slots, get it in there. Okay, finally got it. Here's my tip and trick on how to do it. Grab the rear wheel while it's still in gear, not the tire, but the rear wheel, so you don't get any oil on it. There is a minute amount of float in this whole assembly. I mean, you can't even really feel it, but just put pressure around the clutch assembly as you're pushing in on the splines and rotate the back wheel just a little bit back and forth while you're pushing on it and moving the whole thing around and it will find its position. There is one position where it goes on. All right, so that's the easiest way to do it. <laughs> now we put our retaining ring back on with the bend facing out. We're going to bend that back over the nut. Just make sure that this is pushed all the way on. This is barely going to grab the splines. It's just going to sit there at the end. Just make sure it's on the splines when you put your nut on. And then we have the nut itself. It has a flat side and a cut inside. The cut inside goes towards the engine, so you have this flat flush side all the way out. Just be careful if that retaining ring doesn't slide down when you're, whoop, like that, <laughs> when you're putting it back on. I know it's kind of hard to see right now, and the sun went down. <laughs> so I got some lights on, but there's nothing really fancy about doing this. Once this gets on, it is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay. So that's that. Now I'm finding the easiest way of tightening it is to drop it in top gear, put it down on the side stand. Bike's going to want to go backwards so you don't have to worry about it walking off the side stand. Now I'm going to get my wife out here to put some weight on the back end because rear tire is just starting to spin. It's really close. I would guess I'm in the 50s right now, but I just want to hear that click. There we go. I knew I was close. So all I have is the wife sitting on back, that stops the tire from spinning. <sighs> Hard part's done. Now we just got to bend this retainer tab back and we'll put on our stack. So I'm going to lay down some towels here, take out my friction plates, just so they're not sopping wet as I'm trying to work with them. This is new oil, so this will go right in the bike here when I'm done with it. Okay, so we start off with four pairs of the new friction plate, then the new clutch plate. There's one. There's two. There's the second clutch plate. The third friction plate. And the third clutch plate, the fourth friction plate, and the fourth clutch plate. And now we put in another friction plate and then one of the old clutch plates. This is one of the old ones. And that's part 17 on the new microfish call out. And then one of the new friction plates, one of the new clutch plates, and 
now one of the new thin friction plates. And yep, we are running out of room fast. <laughs> Let's go ahead and assemble the new spring assembly. Now the first thing we have to do is drive in this new bearing. It's just like doing a wheel bearing. It's just a slight press fit. I'm going to put this down on the floor. And what you need is a socket with the same or just barely smaller diameter. And you hammer it straight down, making sure that pressure is only on the outer race of the bearing. So you use this end of the socket. Make sure only the outer race is being contacted. You give it hard, quick wraps straight down on a hard surface just until it's seated. Should only take a couple hits. And then you just look on the underside, make sure it's nice and flush. Should still be silky smooth, or you did something wrong. Good to go. All right, next up are the circlips that have to go in. So next we have to put in these little clips. And they do appear to have a direction to them. they got little ears on the sides, and they just go in these little slots here. As far as I can tell, they're just landings for the springs. And I'm putting them in, and they're fitting best. Uh, a little hard to see it, but like this. So if you're looking at Pac-Man, he's going counterclockwise. And they just drop in, and click into place. Just make sure that the ears are in the tabs. So that's that. All right, now these teeth here are what the last clutch and friction plate are going to grab to. Okay, I've got the washer bent back over the nut. Now we pop back in our centerpiece. Just pushes in with a little oomph. It's got an O-ring on it. Now we've got our spring assembly. Got the last clutch plate and the last friction plate on it. These three stands here are going to go through our spring assembly holes. And we just want to align our friction plate fingers with the tabs here. And be careful that this doesn't slide off when you're putting it on. Now our springs go on. And we've got our cap and bolts. The cap has one edge that stands out, that goes towards the engine. The springs seat right around those. And the bolts run in. You're going to want to do these, same as the old ones came off, in sequence. Just get them in place for now. And tighten them down. I'm going to look at the torque spec for the old ones. Same size bolts, so it's going to be the same torque spec and it's going to be one after the other in a there's no crisscross pattern for three but in sequence you don't want to run one all the way down then do the other two but let's see what the book says book spec is 5.8 pounds for the old ones like I said same size bolt so that's what we're going to do just running them down in sequence until they get fairly snug and then we'll torque them. At that foot pounds, uh, you know, you can do it just real good and snug. It's not a lot. Good and snug. Not even what you do for a spark plug. These are not big bolts. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Woo! took a long time, now I can take this rag out, make sure we don't have any kind of debris. That's something printed, <laughs> the shadow made it look like dirt, everything looks good. So, 
Now I can put the cover back on, fill it with oil. I'm going to leave it up on the center stand, start it up, make sure everything appears to be in working order, which it should be. Technically, there's really nothing difficult about this. Theoretically. <laughs> and we'll see how it goes. I do need to clean off this gasket surface. There's some schmutz. You just want to make sure there's no actual material left. And you have a nice, clean metal mating surface. Use a little gasket scraper if you have it. Or some cleaner and a cloth. Nothing's really stuck on here, though. It looks good. But you definitely don't want any kind of leaks in this area since it is filled with oil and somewhat pressurized. All right, I'm going to zip the cover back on. Cross our fingers, eh? Okay, day two. No, it's not that long of a project. I'm just trying to do all this stuff in the middle of my other jobs. <laughs> so, got some daylight. We're going to wrap this up. What I'm going to do right now is flush my clutch hydraulic system. It's something that needs to be done every two years along with the brake system anyway. At the very least, you have to bleed it at this point because we've taken off the little plunger. That's the piece with the O-ring, and that's what actually gets pushed out when you pull in your clutch lever, and that fights against the spring to release tension on all the plates. So we've taken that out, and of course the lever doesn't work right until we bleed the system, but I'm coming up on the two years in just a couple months anyway, so I'm going to do all my hydraulic maintenance right now while I got everything off. And I'm just going to verify after I do that that everything's functioning physically right here before I button the cover up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll put a link to the uh, how-to video for doing the flushing in the description and probably in a card up in the video here. <clears throat> so you can do that as well. I'm not going to go through that again in this video. Success! Always check for proper actuation before you start to reassemble anything. Now I'm just going to put on the new gasket and the cover. Now the only thing special you need to know about this is the assembly order of, this, of the bolts. And of course make sure that your pins are either in the engine or in the cover. In my case one stuck in the cover, one stuck in the case. You got one over here and one down here. And yeah, that's it. So just line those up, put your new gasket on. What they want you to do is torque them down to just under nine foot pounds. So again, just really good and snug. It's 8.7 if you want to be technical. They want you to start here at two o'clock, go counterclockwise, and then do it again. Same torque value, it's not a two step. They just list 8.7 twice. So obviously by the time you get back around, this is gonna be a little loose. You just wanna make sure that they're all just under nine and finish it up. And that's it for the cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and, go ahead and bolt that on right now, fill it back up with oil, and give it a shot. I'm gonna leave it on the center stand. It's in neutral right now. Take it through the, uh, the shifting real slow, but I don't think there's gonna be any more gotchas. Okay, first test. Obviously everything's buttoned up. Just going around the block. Want to really feel things out? Tell you what. Oh man, it feels good just sitting here. It is about half. Obviously I don't have any way to really quantify how many pounds of pressure it takes, but I can tell you just subjectively, it's about half. I can do it with one finger now. It's not little finger, like the Super Tenere or the Verses. Literally, that thing just flops back and forth. I can almost do it with my little finger, but definitely one finger. It is right about half. It is on par if you've ridden, say, the new X-Diavolo S. On par with that. Off the center stand. Did a brake job. Not a brake job, but flushed the brake system. Whew, that wasn't too bad. Clutch fluid was nasty. Less than two years old on everything. I'm going to start doing that annually. There's just no reason not to. So one thing I was curious about is, does the engine running have any difference as an engine assist? I don't feel any difference. It's just as nice and light. Now I tested it in gear on the center stand. This will be the first test. Yes, I know I'm squitting. I'm not going anywhere out of the neighborhood. This will be the first test on the ground in gear. 
So I'm going to be ready to shut this puppy down. Brake on, clutch in, first gear. So far so good. Go back to neutral. Let's let it out a little tiny bit. And yes, I did pump the brakes after the brake flush. All right, it's engaging about the same point as it did before, about halfway out. Here goes nothing. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to ease into it. Now before it would idle, I don't expect anything to change, it would idle right about eight, nine miles an hour. All right, same thing there. Let's give it a little gas. Now I really don't have a great way of testing the slipper. That's more of a track feature. And even when I would do aggressive downshifts, I never upset the rear wheel. I've done it on the bobber a couple times, but it's just never done it for me on this. So I'm sure it has a slipper feature. However, I doubt I'm going to be activating it. Certainly not normal riding. Let's try a second. Feels exactly the same as the old clutch, except for the lighter pull. Oh my god, this is awesome. 100% recommended. All right, let's try a downshift real quick. Okay. That certainly wouldn't be enough to upset the rear wheel. However, it is a little smoother. Let's try first. Tiny, tiny bit of uh, wheel chatter on that. Can't say I ever purposely did that on the old clutch to tell you what the difference is. Let's try it again, going into first. That seems to drive it the best. All right, quickly down into first. No feathering. I don't know how it's supposed to feel. There's just a tiny, tiny little bit of wheel hop, but it almost feels like ABS pulsing, that level of movement. So that's probably what it's supposed to feel like. You do notice it. Let's go back down into first. It's very slight. I can't imagine that it would be that slight in the old one. I think I would get what I had in the bobber and the, the rear wheel basically screeching for a bit as the speed caught up to the spinning of the wheel. Oh God, I love this pull. I mean, it's almost effortless. When I'm using four fingers to do it, I mean, it's, it's like butter. I could sit here in the engagement zone all day long and never get tired. With four fingers, you barely notice you're pulling the lever. It's that light. Absolutely worth it. Highly recommend you guys do this. Oh man, what a deal too. Aftermarket slipper clutches can go for almost a grand. You're at about 280 bucks depending on your shipping options for this combo. Love it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I have a heck of a lot of editing to do. I've got a lot of text to put in. Uh, I'm going to put in easy instructions so anybody can do this. That's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Please share this video. Share the site. Share the channel. Subscribe and share the channel. Those are the number one things you can do to help me out if you like my content. See you next time.